Before we start, we want to hear your opinion on the huge debate that's happening right now in the community. All throughout the forums, Twitch and Twitter, there has been chatter about how difficult it is to heal in Dragonflight. Now, some people are convinced that healing is the hardest it's ever been and that every healer needs huge buffs, while other people are more optimistic, saying that healers might have challenges this expansion, but they're generally in a good place. In fact, in both seasons so far, we've seen some pretty high keys being pushed with no healer in the group. So how do you explain that? Now, we want to know your thoughts here. What do you think about the state of healing right now in Mythic Plus? And uh, if anything, what would you like changed? And while you're doing that, let's get started. We're back again to rank every healer from beginner friendly to advanced in Mythic Plus and to tell you what spec might actually become way easier next patch. Now, just like before, our rankings are based on skill floors, which represents the minimum amount of effort needed to start pushing higher keys. Skill ceilings are completely different. It's possible for a spec to be easy to pick up, but harder to master. These lists, they're always subjective to some degree, which is why we need some criteria to base our rankings. Healers, they're gonna share some criteria with DPS, including the complexity of their rotation, the expectation to help with utility and mob control, and passive durability. Then, we'll need to think about some of the extra role-specific things healers do in M+, which in this case is damage. If a healer can dish out DPS with minimal effort, they're going to score pretty well here. And we're going to start with some of the more advanced healers in Dragonflight, which we're not going to recommend for true beginners here. First up, Disc Priest, which is actually the healer that might become way easier in the next patch. But why is this? First, let's understand how Disc Priest healing currently works. Instead of healing with actual healing spells, Disc Priest primarily heals with Atonement, which converts damage into healing. But you might see an obvious problem here. Healers don't do that much damage relative to DPS, because if they did, you could just stack Disc Priest and Raid. And we all know that Blizzard has a mm, firm stance against any sort of class stack. And jokes aside, in order to make Atonement work efficiently, Disc Priests need to stack a bunch of modifiers in order to build the damage ramp needed to do any noticeable healing. It's like a set of gears. In order to work, everything needs to be moving together at the same time. And if one piece is off, then your healing will suffer catastrophic failure. In 10.2, a few modifiers are being redesigned to be more passive in the Disc Priest healing ramp which, you know, on paper, should make the spec easier to play across all forms of content, which seems to be Blizzard's goal with these changes. Now, until then, Disc presents itself as one of the more challenging healers rotationally because it involves juggling tons of different modifiers and playing around bursty damage ramps. Now, fortunately, Disc makes up some ground when it comes to mob control. As one of the few healers without an interrupt and with limited CC options, Disc Priests aren't expected to do much on pulls outside of damage and healing. Now, with that said, survivability can be an issue for the entire Priest class given their low base armor values, which means being more proactive with smaller forms of damage mitigation in order to survive big hits. Anyway, for now, we're going to be slotting Disc Priest as one of the more challenging healers for Mythic Plus. But with 10.2 around the corner, we could see this change and maybe even see a boost in representation where Disc is currently lagging behind. Next up in our advanced category is Preservation Evoker. And now, of course, there is the age-old meme that playing Evoker can be a bit frustrating because of positional requirements. Now, just like Disc Priest Atonement, Evoker healing is pretty unique compared to everyone else, too. As one of the few healers that actually need to aim their spells, you're at the whim of your group to not flub their positioning. And if that wasn't enough, one of the main evoker rotational spells flies them directly to their target, which, um, as you can imagine, can sometimes result in zooming directly into a frontal. Another challenging aspect of evoker is all of the expectations it has when it comes to mob control, with a ranged kick, a knockback, a knock up, soft CC, and an optional stun, evokers can do a lot to help with trash. Now, the one place Evoker makes up a ton of ground in is on the damage side. 
where the overwhelming majority of damage output comes from two spells, which conveniently deal AoE damage. With Fire Breath's conical effect and Living Flame's built-in cleave mechanic, doing damage as an evoker is pretty straightforward, and generally, it's pretty safe since both can be dealt from range. So overall, we're confident in placing evoker in the hard difficulty category with a highly unique healing toolkit and lots of potential for multitasking. Preservation is probably not the best healer for true beginners. Now, before we reveal our next advanced healer, we need to understand something. Just because something is meta, it doesn't necessarily mean it's easy. Now, obviously, Holy Paladin is the best healer in Mythic Plus at higher key levels, but when it comes to the entire healer population across all ratings, Holy Paladin isn't overwhelmingly popular. But why is that? The strength of Holy Paladin at the highest level stems from the enormous amount of impact it can have on trash. Having a melee interrupt, single target stun, and an AoE stop combined with the healing rotation that relies on dealing damage, Holy Paladins are expected to do a lot more than just heal and play a role resembling a melee-based healer. When it comes to actually healing, Paladins need to plan around very specific cooldown windows and healing combos, including Hand of Divinity and Tears Deliverance, which work together as a healing ramp and are optimized for padding smaller sources of damage over a long period of time. While not a massive execution test, this involves a fair amount of planning and proactive play and uh, overall, Holy Paladins can feel a bit restricted to precise cooldown windows, which means needing to carefully plan ahead. Now, the one thing that does make Paladin easier than other healers is survivability. Sanctified Plates might actually be the best defensive passive in the entire game, giving the entire Paladin class some pretty solid durability against big hits, which is definitely needed when constantly playing in melee range to make the most out of their utility. And now, just to be clear, even though Holy Paladins are the strongest healer currently, it doesn't translate into being the easiest healer. The spec has a bunch of expectations and is designed around a builder-spender system that's fairly unique compared to other forms of resource management. Last but certainly not least, Mistweaver Monk is the final healer in our advanced tier. In Mythic Plus, the most ubiquitous monk build is the Fist Weaver, which is similar to Disc Priest Atonement, converting damage into healing through a passive called Ancient Teachings. Also similar to Disc Priest, there are spells that can increase the effectiveness of this damage to healing transfer. While all of this might seem like Mistweaver Monk might have the same problem as Disc Priest, this is far from the truth as the Mistweaver melee rotation is pretty straightforward. And more often than not, spinning crane kick spam can do the job of keeping everyone alive. Now, of course, being a melee-based healer comes with some unique challenges. And much like Holy Paladins, Mistweaver Monks need to dance around melee-specific mechanics, making sure to dodge any frontals while being able to contribute to mob control with kicks and AoE stops. And as a leather-wearing class, Monks don't have the luxury to tank as much damage as Holy Paladins. Spot healing can be an issue for Mistweaver Monk too, but that seems to be a game-wide problem for most healers at this time. While Shaylon's Gift provides some coverage in that department, monks can struggle to quickly top health bars when melee attacking isn't an option. You might be wondering what healers are more beginner-friendly, and not to worry because we do have two suggestions here. Here we have a similar disclaimer though from before. If being meta doesn't mean the same thing as being easy, then being off-meta doesn't necessarily mean a spec is hard. Right now, finding a Holy Priest on the plus 25 leaderboard is kind of like finding a rare shiny Pokemon. If you spend enough time, you're bound to find one, but literally only one. Now, this doesn't mean that Holy Priests are complete trash, but instead suggests that their toolkits aren't really optimized for the highest keys. So how could they possibly be friendly for beginners? For one, the Holy Priest rotation is pretty linear and it's pretty straightforward. Unlike Disc Priests, who have to solve a few math equations before being able to heal, Holy Priests can just press their actual healing abilities, which are all quite telegraphed. Need a single target heal? You got a button for it. Need to AoE heal in a pinch? You got a button for that too. Need to pad heal? Well, you get the idea. Now, we don't want to suggest that Holy Priest healing is absolutely free here, but compared to other specs, it ironically feels like the most vanilla of all the healers. 
If we've learned anything, it's that these days, being vanilla isn't a bad thing at all. Your favorite flavor is vanilla. Just because Holy Priest is beginner friendly doesn't mean it comes without its issues though. Just like discipline, Holy is also prone to just getting blasted by damage while also struggling to dish out any of its own. While there have been buffs to Holy Priest damage in the recent past, the spec needs to do a lot of hard casting to actually put out DPS, which isn't exactly ideal in movement intensive encounters. Now, even though Holy Priest has obvious limitations, it still is a good option for beginners, especially for people who have never healed before. Now, it might not be suitable for record setting keys, but with future tuning, it could become a more appealing option for players looking to push. If Holy Priest isn't your thing, then Resto Shaman is another suitable choice for beginners. And just like Holy Priest, Resto Shaman strikes a good balance between single target, AoE, and maintenance heals, where each spell has a very obvious use case. The same is true on the damage side of things, where Resto Shamans not only deal damage passively with their main AoE heal, but also have an instant cast source of damage through Lava Burst procs that can fill any downtime between Chain Lightning casts. In lower keys, where there's less damage to heal, Resto Shamans can have a high impact with DPS without disrupting their healing output. The main difficulty is dealing with heavy AoE damage where proactive play is absolutely needed. Now, in these situations, Resto Shamans need to play around their Cloudburst totem, making sure to time it carefully to explode its healing after a major AoE hit. This, of course, requires a bit of dungeon knowledge and experience, but is fairly similar to the type of ramping other healers need to pull off. Outside of Cloudburst Totem, Shaman cooldowns are fairly intuitive since they're simply just flat healing increases, which helps eliminate all the guesswork. But overall, Shamans are one of the more accessible healers, especially in entry-level keys where they can passively have a high impact on group performance. Now that we've defined our two extremes, let's go back and look at the only intermediate level healer for Mythic Plus. Here we have Resto Druid, which recently saw a small rework but is still within medium difficulty. The biggest learning curve for Resto Druid is mastering how and when to ramp. Instead of having massive on-demand healing cooldowns, Resto Druids rely heavily on Flourish, which is a cooldown that requires a ton of proactive play. To make Flourish effective, Druids need to prepare well in advance, spending six or more globals pre-hotting multiple targets. At lower level keys, it might be possible to survive pressure points without a proper ramp, but in higher keys, damage is unhealable without precise ramping. Now with that said, there were some noticeable quality of life improvements to Resto Druid in the 1.7 patch, which included the addition of Tree Ants, which are NPC tree healers that automatically cast Wild Growth and nourish injured players. And while Tree Ants certainly made some aspects of Resto Druid healing easier, the spec continues to be APM intensive and very proactive. Another obvious difficulty curve for Resto Druid is damage dealing. Unlike Shamans, for instance, who can deal consistently high damage with only a few buttons, Resto Druids are noticeably more complicated. Single target damage is dealt primarily in cat form, managing up to six dots at a time while weaving in other finishers as needed. Multi-target damage also involves dot management too, which, when combined with the need to ramp HOTS, is the main reason why Druid might have the highest APM out of all the healers. Now, one reason we're not moving Druid to the advanced difficulty is their relatively light commitments to mob control. With only two stops and without any interrupt, Druids aren't as involved with CC compared to Paladins, for instance. Also, just like Paladins, Druids have some pretty solid passive survivability through bear form. Now, obviously, you don't want to camp bear form 24-7, but it does make it much easier to survive the big hits. With everyone accounted for, we have our final rankings for healers in Dragonflight Season 2. We started this video with a question, is healing the hardest it's ever been? Regardless of your answer, there is a gradient of difficulty between every healer. And once again, our rankings, they represent a guide for the average player looking to play Mythic Plus consistently and grind keystones up to Keystone Master and beyond.
Regardless of whether or not you're a beginner or a keystone grinder, we want to make Mythic Plus a better experience for everyone. And with that in mind, we want to know what topics you would like us to cover next. Drop a comment below and we might feature your idea in an upcoming video. And while you're commenting down below, be sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications so you can get instant access to our latest releases. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching and we'll see you soon.